In early 1996, Pam and Tommy learned that their honeymoon tape had made its way into the hands of Bob Guccione, who was the creator of one of the most popular adult magazines in the world, Penthouse. Now by this point, Pam and Tommy have some solid leads about who took this tape in the first place and they seem ready to fight everybody to keep this video from spreading. So in March of 1996, they file a massive $10 million lawsuit against Penthouse, Ray and Gautier, Milton Ingley, and anybody else they thought could be involved. In their case, they allege that a contractor stole the tape from their home and then sold it to the highest bidder, which turned out to be Bob Guccione at Penthouse. Pam and Tommy's lawsuit also accused Penthouse of planning to sell and distribute their tape, which they made clear they did not consent to. Now, Penthouse confirmed that they did, in fact, have a copy of this tape, but they said they were not the ones that stole it. Instead, they said they acquired the tape while gathering the news, like the upstanding journalists that they are, and so they had a legal right not only to keep it, but to share the video with the public because this footage was so newsworthy. Now, why was it newsworthy? Well, Penthouse argued the footage showed Pam rolling a joint, and Pam had told Star Magazine the year before that she didn't do drugs. Now, Pam and Tommy's attorneys obviously disagreed with that assessment, and they pointed out that the tape was stolen property and that Penthouse admitted it was stolen property, and so they should just give it back. See, Pam and Tommy's goal with this lawsuit was obviously to stop this tape from being shared, and so they wanted the court to order everybody to return any copies of their tape, and they wanted the judge to ban Penthouse and Rand and Milton from sharing it. So obviously the two sides in this case were split, and so it was going to take a while for everyone to argue and for the judge to decide this case. But in the meantime, Pam and Tommy wanted the judge to issue an immediate order stopping everybody from sharing the tape until the case was decided. There was just one problem with that, though, the U.S. Constitution. See, when somebody shares a piece of content, that's a form of speech. And here in America, we like free speech. Yes, of course, there are some exceptions to the First Amendment, but we figure out if those are applicable only after someone speaks. We don't censor people ahead of time, and so the U.S. Constitution generally will not let a court prevent someone from saying something before they've said it. But that is what Pam and Tommy were asking the court to do, to ban Penthouse from sharing their tape. But ultimately, the court denies their request. This whole thing blows my mind. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if a married couple videotapes their lovemaking and some thief steals this video, how is it that the Lees lost their case to prevent the publication of stills from the tape? What the courts allow for the most part is okayed by every red-blooded real American hero. Let the good times roll. Now let's be clear, this did not mean that the judge was telling Penthouse, yo, you are totally free to share this tape and you won't get in trouble from it. And Penthouse understood this. It knew that it did not have the copyright to this tape. And so Penthouse knew it would still be risky to share any clips or any still frames from the video without Pam and Tommy's permission. But despite that, Penthouse definitely still wanted to cover this big story about the tape in their magazine. And so in their June 1996 issue, they put a very eye-catching shot of Pam on their cover. And inside, they devote six pages sharing photos and an article that talks about that stolen honeymoon tape. Now, they don't publish any still frames from the stolen video. Instead, they print those old Polaroids that had showed Pam and Tommy having sex, Polaroids that had already been published before in the past in magazines, and photos that Penthouse knew it could more easily argue were fair game in the very likely event that Pam and Tommy would sue them again, which, of course, they did. After that racy penthouse issue, the couple files a lawsuit demanding that penthouse pay up for sharing these photos without their consent and for violating their privacy. And now that these photos had already been published and the speech had already been spoken, the judge in the court could look at exactly how they were used and could decide whether penthouse broke the law by sharing them. But when the judge does that, he ends up saying penthouse didn't do anything wrong under the law. How? Well, the court ruled that the stolen Polaroids were no longer private because they'd already been published. So if somebody violates your copyright once, then I guess it's cool for everybody else to do it. It also ruled that even though Penthouse was using these photos without Pam and Tommy's permission, 
the magazine was not profiting from them illegally because they were printed with an article reporting about how Pam and Tommy felt about the stolen pics being shared, and so that made the article newsworthy. The judge was basically saying, look, if Penthouse is gonna report on how Pam and Tommy felt about these photos being shared of them, then of course they're gonna have to show the photos so that readers know what we're talking about. That's so crazy, we, how? They deemed it newsworthy. How? Right. That was having I think it was your, your size wife. made it newsworthy. <laughs> it wasn't just average, it was newsworthy. That's, cra I just, that's just crazy, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. And look, as a journalist, I definitely appreciate the value of fair use when it comes to copyright and news reporting, and look, this channel guzzle would not even be possible without that, but I still feel like there need to be some limits when it comes to sharing stolen images of people having sex, but the judge felt differently. E! Online wrote that, Tommy and Pamela Anderson Lee's sex life can be enjoyed by all, now that a federal judge has dismissed their lawsuit against Penthouse. In his ruling, the judge also mentioned that Pam had been very open about her sex life before, and that she had talked about dangling naked on a swing above Tommy's piano, and that Tommy had her name tattooed on his penis. MTV reported at the time that the judge essentially concluded that once celebrities allow media scrutiny of their private lives, they must learn to live with the subsequent news coverage. We feel very violated. I mean, that's, those are some private, private moments. I'm horrified, it's not cool. Tommy said, the judge in our video case shut Pamela and me down on every privacy issue. As the penthouse attorney in the case says, this decision teaches a vital lesson to those who video themselves having sex and take insufficient care with respect to the tapes. Best thing from this is don't make a sex tape because you never know what can happen to it. Ladies, don't ever let a man film you. No ifs, ands, or buts. You've been watching an excerpt from my video on the savage scammer behind the release of Pam and Tommy's honeymoon tape, and there is so much more to this story, so if you want to see the full video, you can find that link down in the description, or you can search YouTube for Pam and Tommy by Mary Betsy.